This monitor provides a 31.5 inch display, 1440p 144Hz gameplay, FreeSync and Xbox One X support, a rage-proof stand to keep it locked in place, and it's curved so you don't miss any of the action. Get in the game with the VOTech Grinder. But first, a word from the show's sponsor. The Mod Mic Wireless can boldly go where no mic has gone before. This microphone can attach to any headphones, requires no additional wires, features very low latency, a dual capsule microphone, 12 hour battery life, and LED indicators on the receiver so you know when you're muted and or when the battery is running low. And you can basically run your entire house without ever losing a signal. What more could you ask for? Learn more by clicking the link in the video description. It's not every day that I bring something quite this big into the studio for review. Although, the past couple of months have been a lot more of that than I would prefer. But today we are checking out the biggest gaming monitor I've actually ever personally had in my own space. And this is from a company called Viotech, which from what I can tell is a, a somewhat new entry to the gaming PC monitor market. And they are a competitor kind of in line with like Pixio, where they're providing a lot of cheap gaming monitors that have the features that just a couple years ago would have been really, really a lot more expensive, uh, but for a more affordable price. And so this is their 32 or 31 and a half inch curved 1440p 144 hertz gaming monitor. It doesn't have G-Sync or anything ridiculously fancy like that, but it's relatively affordable, especially considering the size of a 32 inch beast of a monitor is up your alley. It, I'm not, honestly not sure if it'll fit on our desk. And it has a couple other features like picture in picture and things like that, and it's curved, which for a monitor this big, I've actually struggled with this, and hopefully by now you will have seen in my little uh, monitor roulette video series. I actually bought a 32 inch monitor for editing and it wasn't curved, and I ended up with serious like vignetting around the edges of not being able to see the full brightness of the monitor due to how big it was. So the curvedness will help with that. Top of the box, we have parts for the stand. They have what they're calling a rage proof stand, which is supposed to mean that you can kind of get angry and slam away to your heart's content and it won't have a problem. It's basically a giant V, we'll find out. I thought it was a kind of funny gimmick name. You got usual display port cable, power cable, mounting hardware. That's not what we care about. Ugh. Here we have the monitor panel itself. That is a pretty significant curve, but it's not enough that I think you'll experience the bow tie effect too much, but we'll get to that later in the review. It's got nice, I don't know if you can see that from here, but it's got a very nice, just subtle red accent along the border, which is kind of going for that gamer aesthetic with the little angles here and there, but isn't too aggressive. That makes it kind of look like transformer venting, but that's all right. We do have Visa mounting on the back here, which is great because I'm not a fan of certain monitor stands. You've got DVI, HDMI, DisplayPort, and then an audio out jack for running. Hopefully it's a good quality. I've run into with a lot of these uh, monitors these days is they're not including good uh, audio or analog to digital conversions on them and, or I guess digital analog conversion, whatever. They're not very good on the audio out, which I use for my mixers and stuff like that. So that's been pretty frustrating. And then you have the power supply built in. So it's a standard three pin, just like PC power supply. Jesus, there we go. That was way more difficult than it should have been. And now that I've got handprints all over it, this is the assembled monitor. And I will say that stand requires a lot of desk room. Like that is probably a good foot of just like length across your desk. But my entire workbench is shaking before that stand budges. So rage proof indeed. Over the next couple days, I'm gonna get this hooked up and start gaming and testing on it, and we'll circle back for my full review, but I'm pretty excited. It does have, pretty obnoxious to use, but it does have height adjusts here, definitely locks into place, no tilt and no swivel, so you will have to just move the stand as is, but for something that big, I wouldn't expect a full 90 degree tilt because you'd be smashing it into your desk, so I'm excited. 
Having used this monitor, which I have taken to calling the grinder due to the funny model number for a couple weeks now, I'm enjoying it enough that I've started adapting my gaming setup to accommodate it as my primary gaming display, which honestly, I, I didn't expect. This GN32DR, or the grinder, has a 31.5 inch 2560 by 1440 VA panel curved at an angle of 1800R for a 170 degree viewing angle. The 1800R number is a measurement of the radius of the circle that the monitor is curved on. This one is more aggressively curved designed for an up close viewing angle, which is a good idea for a monitor of this size. The monitor has a typical brightness of 250 nits, which sounds low these days, but it can get pretty bright. And then it has a contrast ratio of 3000 to one. I was actually super concerned about this monitor when on the very first game that I launched on it, I started checking for motion blur, which was disabled, but it felt like it was enabled. It just seemed like everything that I had played, or everything that I played had a lot of blur and ghosting going on, which sent me down a rabbit hole of checking for lat latency and frame pacing and ghosting issues using a couple tests, which I will have linked in the video description, the UFO tests and things like that. Those helped me check those things by looking at gray to gray transitions and black to white transitions and a couple color ones. Along the way, I also used my Leo Bodnar uh, latency checker, which Wendell from Level 1 Text told me about. Uh, I discovered that this panel actually has a really low response time. At checking at the latency at the bottom of the panel, the lowest that this checker can show is 16 milliseconds, because it's 60 FPS, and it was just barely over 16. This is a really fast panel, and with the right settings, the motion blur is easily reduced, and more so if you start lowering the refresh rate. I typically run my 144Hz panels at 120Hz due to camera syncing issues anyway, so that worked out for me. The reason that I felt like there was more ghosting than usual on the VOTech was because the BinQ Zowie monitor I typically game on, the XL2730, has a blur reduction mode that strobes the backlight at the same rate as the refresh rate you set it to. Bouncing back and forth with the ghosting tests, though, making it much more difficult to capture on camera since it's basically emulating a CRT in a way, which, you know, I don't mind. <laughs> it does do a lot to reduce the motion blur, but it does increase the latency a bit. But the BenQ monitor has more inherent input latency than the VOTech anyway, which was interesting to learn. Back to the VOTech grinder, <laughs> by turning off settings bypass, you can set response time to low and keep input latency down and mitigate some of the ghosting. Being a VA panel, it's going to have a little bit more ghosting than similar TN panels anyway, but I got used to it quickly and don't even notice it anymore, even when switching back and forth between monitors. I didn't find any significant impact on ghosting via any of the other settings, but let's cover those. The menu system can be pretty obnoxious. One button changes the monitor between full and limited RGB range. Typically speaking, you want full range for PC use and limited for console use. It's actually kind of handy to have this as a quick option since this monitor does have HDMI 2.0 input, which can work with game consoles, especially the Xbox One X, which can output 1440p and supports FreeSync. But I have the base Xbox One, so I can't show you that. Single tier. Another menu option adds different crosshairs to the screen if you're into that. Next to that button you have a profile switcher which switches between built-in profiles for general gaming, FPS games, RTS games, text reading, movie mode, and standard mode. FPS seems to be the brightest by default with text being the darkest by default. I typically leave it on FPS and not, not the moment and it works well enough for me. None of the weird added sharpness that my BenQ does in FPS mode, which has always annoyed me. The last button, aside from the power button, is the general menu button which you can use to do everything else. Change inputs, change profile brightness and contrast settings, turn off DCR, which is dynamic contrast ratio. This sounds nice, but typically just results in your brightness fluctuating constantly, which isn't good. Here you can also set the sharpness, set response time to low like I mentioned, add noise reduction if you want, or super resolution, which tries to clean up a lower resolution input a bit. And here you can also turn on FreeSync and even set up picture in picture or picture by picture modes. There's a lot there, I just find the default menu assignments to the buttons to be a tad annoying. This was my first at home experience with AMD FreeSync, but unfortunately it was with the RX 580 which couldn't capture the feed very well in OBS, I had to switch to X264, and couldn't run most of my games well. But, despite not even coming close to 120Hz lock speed, I never experienced any tearing and it felt quite smooth, so I guess it works here. 
Overall, the Viotech GN32DR grinder is a win for me. It has a nice, big, bright screen, super fast response time with low input latency, free sync support, which may work with NVIDIA G-Sync soon with their new driver updates coming January 15th. It has a rock solid stand that doesn't budge. I thought that would be a gimmick, but it just doesn't move. Your entire desk will move instead of the stand. It has an HDMI 2.0 input for game consoles or to make it easier for capture cards. Despite being a bigger screen, it has the smaller 75x75 75 75 Visa mount, which will make it more awkward to put on an arm, but overall it's a solid screen. The curvature is just right for up close gaming without losing any brightness on the edges. As always, product links will be down there in the video description. While you're down there, hit the like button, subscribe for more tech education. I'm Vox, and I'll see you next time.